So far, we've learned that proteins are composed of linear sequences of amino acids held together by peptide bonds. In Frederick Sanger's day, this simple notion was a hotly debated issue, as many biochemists held fast to the belief that proteins were made of collections of slightly different molecules. To these scientists, the idea of sequencing a protein had no meaning, because proteins lacked any sort of intrinsic sequence. Starting from the assumption that a peptide was a sequence of monomer units, Sanger worked a staggering 10 years to solve the sequence of the protein insulin. Let's take a moment to examine the problem of peptide sequencing before diving into the solutions offered by Sanger and his contemporaries. Let's draw a hypothetical polypeptide sequence. I'll label the N and C termini to denote the free amino group on one end of the chain and the free carboxylic acid group on the other end. Our goal is to identify the order of amino acids within this hypothetical peptide from the N terminus to the C terminus. What makes the determination of this sequence so difficult? The first thing to notice is that our hypothetical polypeptide is directional. If we hope to apply organic chemistry to the solution of this problem, we'll need to use reactions that deal selectively with either an amino group or a carboxylic acid group. Any non-selective reactions may result in cleavage at either end or the middle of the chain. Such events would make it impossible for us to determine the peptide sequence with certainty. The second complicating factor has to do with the fact that each link holding the monomer units together is a peptide bond. You might imagine that to sequence our peptide, we have to somehow selectively cleave only the link at the beginning of the chain. After doing this, we can analyze what falls off, then repeat the process until we reach the end of the chain. What makes this difficult is the fact that all the links are the same we somehow have to distinguish an amide bond at the beginning of the chain from one later in the sequence. You'll see that the solution to this dilemma involves some tricky chemistry. Advances in peptide chemistry were, like many scientific discoveries, incremental. In the upcoming series of webcasts, we'll examine ways to determine both protein composition and sequence. Since determining protein composition is a simpler problem than the one just described for sequencing, we'll start with composition in the next webcast.